안녕하십니까. Good afternoon. I'm Song Jin Hyun. I'm working at Kumari. Today, I'd like to introduce you our ambitious plan for marine substantiation vessels. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce you the overview, brief overview of this project, and I'm going to give you the background of the project, and then I will suggest some. I will inform you of some issues, and I will suggest some solutions, and then I will give you our business overview, followed by technical overview. Kumari was established in November 2011 under the Article 42 of the Industrial Technology Innovation Promotion Act. As you know, branches of the research center are scattered across the country, specifically coastal cities, including Gunsan, Yongam, Ulsan, and Yongdo. We are supporting a certification process and technical process, as you can see on the slide. We, our focus is on R&D, and we are also providing infrastructure for tests and certification. We have infrastructure for LNG tests and electric wave system and a wide range of uh, service and test system. Not only for R&D and for ISO related projects, we are providing services. Uh, this is my team. At the top, we have the department leader, Taehyung Kim. And in my team is responsible for uh, maritime substantiation for mid and large ships and small ships. Uh, let me give you background of this project. You've heard greenhouse gas emission several times throughout sessions, not just for uh, ships, but for airplane, power generation, and other sectors. This is a key word and buzz, buzzword, and IMO introduced regulations. They will be applied to the maritime industry. And the detail or more information was already delivered by previous speakers in biodiesel, LNG, LPG, hydrogen, and fuel cells, they are emerging as new alternative fuels. We cannot say for sure which one of these will be the future, leading future fuel, because we have to think about what economic viability they have and what cost effectiveness they have. So we have to evaluate these a future potential future fuels to decide which one will be the leading future fuel. And the government enacted a new law called Law on Promotion for Development and Distribution of Eco-Friendly Ships in 2018. And last year, the first basic plan was named 2030 Green Ship K. And a master report was also published to give more information on the basic plan. And the vision here is to realize 2050 carbon neutral industrial ecosystem by establishing Green Ship K Foundation. The purpose and strategy are future eco friendly ship building and acquisition and of course, reduction of greenhouse gas emission. There are six initiatives. They are acquisition world leading technology, establishment of a test space, which is 
related to my organization's activities, and then promotion of demonstration projects. Another key initiative is promotion of demonstration project and expansion of a fuel supply infrastructure and promotion of supplying eco-friendly shifts and creating an ecosystem and standardization and developing operational framework are also part of the key initiatives. I want you to look at number three here. In promotion of demonstration projects were not the main or key part of government projects. And this uh, number three, the initiative number three, was newly introduced. And this is our submarine substantiation vessel project is being performed under the initiative number three. Let me tell you major issues. This this shows the major process of the demonstration. First, we develop technology and we contact equipment companies to be provided and supplied equipment. And then we perform land tests. My organization, Kumari, is just doing land tests. The next step is classification approval. KR, or DMV, GL, or load register, they, they are the organizations that can give a certification or approval. After obtaining approval, we can choose equipment and put them on a mountain. This is the basic process, but here we have a challenge to overcome when we go through these, these steps. Some shipyards and uh, shipping companies complain that they can't use the equipment. I think this is a common problem facing all of us, but my solution is very simple. We can build a ship and mount the equipment we want on it. But let's say the equipment was not has not been mounted on a ship, so shipping companies and shipyards are resisting to use the equipment because it doesn't have a history. It hasn't been proven as effective. But this cause this leads to a bigger problem. It allows company uh, equipment companies in other countries domin to dominate the in global market for equipment. So my solution, part of my solution is this. The multi-purpose substantiation vessels. We can develop equipment with a purpose to use them on this multi-purpose substantiation vessel. And it can give us easy access to the global market. And this is a very simple logic. And this is not a, you don't, it doesn't take a genius to understand this process. But you may ask why we haven't done this until now. So we were able to talk Busan City into be involved in this, in this project. And that was the beginning of this substantiation vessel project. And next slide shows the basic business overview. The project period is June 2020 to December 2024, and budget is 43 billion Korean won, including in-kind goods. And at the bottom of the page, you can see the organizational chart of Comeri. And at the top of my organizational organizations organizational chart are Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Energy in Busan City. And we have been supported by these government agencies in deciding and allocating budgets and setting up basic strategies and plan. The basic uh, conceptual design started last year, and this year we are expecting to sign a contract with a shipbuilder. 
They will be followed by detailed design, and we are expecting next August or September. We can start building a multi-purpose marine substantiation vessel. Now we are we we've just started a bidding process, and we are expecting two years. Will we take? It will take two years. In the capacity will be twenty four thousand, and this will be a carrier. And as you may well know, China is emerging as a large carrier builders builder. And during the conceptual design or detail design process, we definitely expect there will be we will face challenges. That is why we think it'll take over two years. Two thousand by by two thousand twenty four, this ship would have been delivered. And until then, the first round of equipment supply will be completed, and the total project period is five years. When you operate a ship, there are basic considerations, and we share the considerations with Busan City and the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Including operational profile such as the distance travel, and based on the operational profile, we have to cho choose a ship builder. This ship can be operated for as long as on a year or as short as a month. This ship cannot travel as far as the U.S. or Singapore. And we will set a short uh, travel distance or short route for the test. And with the short route, we will dis designate a, a point where we will embark passengers. And we decided which shipbuilder will support this. And the shipbuilder is it set to supply the materials for POSCO for the next several decades? My organization is not a ship, shipping company, so we are expect we are planning to contract a, a sign a charter contract, and we will put all the human resources required on this project. So we chose. A shipping company and the type of ship we are going to use. Let me briefly introduce you the strategy we developed. There is this ship, and and all the necessary equipment will be mounted on this ship. In by version data, current data, simulation data, thermal data, and sonic data of each equipment will be gathered and collected and they will be calculated. The data will be calculated and when we will share the calculation results with the equipment company so that the equipment company can provide us with aftermarket after sales service on their equipment. Uh, let me give you a technical overview of this project. This ship is 24,000 metric ton. This ship has 24,000 metric ton of capacity. Length is 159 meters, and the in breadth is 26 meters. The spec, the specification was discussed and decided with a ship builder. That was our condition. And we will continue to discuss this specification with our ship builder. And we chose WinGD as a main engine, considering our desired performance of this ship. After completing the conceptual design when and start starting the detailed design, we may switch over to another type of engine and basically it is a uh, guarantee guarantee speed is 
12 nodes with 15% of C margin. If you look at the bottom of the left, you can see the profile of this chip. At the back is an LNG tanker. In parallel, there will be LNG FGS system. Personally, I want to have bigger space or room for LNG FGS system so that we can make this greener and it can be powered by hydrogen, ammonia, and methanol. And we can also, I hope we can put a test bed for those three future fuel, green fuel. And there are requirements made by an equipment company. Let's say the equipment company says, we've developed these tech, these products, but we don't know how, they will, how effective they will be because greenhouse gas emission reduction requires different efforts and measures. And Kumeri's main purpose is to support equipment companies to reduce GHG. All industrial sectors are working together. Let's say a plant wants to work with a shipping companies or a shipping industry, and their biggest concern is they don't know how to use marine equipment. They've never experienced how marine equipment work at a certain condition or environment because they've never been on board in person. So we will consider those concerns when we operate this substantiation vessel. And as I just mentioned, when other industrial sectors want to test a maritime equipment, we will give them our full support. And this is the bridge room. This is the overall picture of a bridge room. We tested the specification of the bridge room. Uh, we are planning to do um, marine substi substantiation test over this, but as you may well know, there is barriers. This hasn't been tested offshore, so it had a difficult time to enter the maritime market. But our tests will give them a better access to the maritime market, I believe. And this is demonstration equipment list. Specifically, it is a maker's list. And you can see items of substantiation equipment. Earlier this year, we had a seminar to discuss these items. And we selected some of the equipment companies, but I'm not at liberty to publish the maker's name here. And remote, remote control system manufacturer and automation control and monitoring system manufacturer were selected. The last two technologies are not uh, advanced technologies, but they were developed by local manufacturers. All they needed was a chance or opportunity to test and have shipping companies experience their and use their items and products. So we wanted to work with local companies and we wanted to give them some preference in this project. So additional equipment might be needed for a substantiation vessel during operation and after operation. And I'd like to say that we can identify those areas where there will be need for additional equipment. Then we can work more, work with more equipment companies. I'd like to work more with local equipment companies. Local uh, equipment companies have to be, have to prosper, then we can expect more prosperous maritime industry in Korea. That ends my
presentation. Thank you very much.